This week, you are doing the second or middle phase of the writing process, drafting. You should have already generated lots of observations about the work of art you are writing about and planned a little of what you're going to say. Now it's time to draft the essay. The most common and helpful thing for making the drafting experience more efficient is to create an outline. That's what you'll be doing in the first half of the week in your small groups. Like we've done before, you'll have the option of a Zoom meeting or a forum to organize your peer reviews in a Google Doc. And the goal of this session is to talk with you through your observations and a potential interpretation, and then to formulate an outline which you'll use to write your draft in the second half of the week. Now, what are you trying to do when you create a good outline? The most important thing to keep in mind with outlines is that you are organizing your ideas into a top-down structure. And this is the same top-down structure that is going to ultimately govern your essay as a whole. Now, this, this is part of a, uh, um, um, a larger pattern that we see in academic writing and informal writing. If you think about the way an essay is organized, uh, as uh, Wiki Howe's uh, graphic shows us here, you realize that it has a kind of top-down hierarchy or organization where we put the thesis statement that summarizes the argument. Well, we always put it at the beginning of an essay. So if you think about an essay, it begins with a clear labeling of what the essay is about, followed by, in the rest of the essay, or the body of the essay, the detailed explication of that main argument. So the concise version, the, the bottom line main point goes to the top. Everything that unfolds that main point goes below it. So that's a top-down organization. We get the whole thing first, and then we get the whole thing in slower, more detailed form. So a whole essay is organized as a top-down organizational structure. Thesis, explanation. But now think about a paragraph. Each paragraph in an essay, don't you just ignore these uh, labels here. That's not really what I'm talking about. I'm like, I liked how these uh, became red because it shows you that within, well, okay, the whole essay was, this is like the red line and these are like the blue lines, right? Red at the top, blue below. But then think about each paragraph. Each paragraph is the same thing in miniature form. At the beginning of a paragraph, you're going to tell your reader what the paragraph's about. It's called a topic sentence. So each paragraph begins with a topic sentence, followed by the explanation or the longer, uh, um, fuller version of what you said at that first sentence. So again, in a, each paragraph, we see the same principle um, followed. We see a top-down organization, the entire thing, the whole thing in a concise form, followed by the whole thing in the full form. All right, so that top, red at the top, blue below, that follows both at the macro level of the essay and the micro level of the essay. All right now, if you can get that, if you can understand that concept, uh, then you have everything you need to be successful, in my opinion, as a college writer. Uh, or at least you have a, you are ninety percent of the way there. It's all in the details after that. If you can get that, then you're well on your way. Now, um, what this means? Think about what this means. This means that topic sentences are kind of like the same thing as thesis statements. A thesis statement is just a topic sentence for the entire essay. All right. So think about topic sentences and thesis statements as the same thing or a family resemblance. Think about your outlining as essentially a preliminary um, a map for what you're trying to do in your essay as a whole. You're going to eventually build out each part of your outline into these different paragraphs and sections. It will basically be an expansion of each line of your outline into a paragraph. Uh, that will help your drafting process stay more organized. 
So use your outline to guide your drafting, but of course, don't be too shackled by it. If you realize that there's a better observation or argument as you're drafting, then go ahead and change it. Remember, the process of writing is recursive. You will discover some of what you're trying to say as you are drafting. You can always go back, and you should go back after you've drafted, and give your essay a top-down organizational structure if along the way it lost some of that nice uh, structure that you had planned. So if we look over at Essay 2 assignment instructions, you'll notice that this assignment does require that top-down organizational structure. So that is, that is why I've been putting so much emphasis on that in this week's lesson. Uh, and of course, the most important part of a top-down structure is the thesis statement. You've been writing thesis statements for your essays and observation journals in this class, but let me just insert a quick tip about writing thesis statements. Right? This phrase is, uh, is called a lead-in phrase or a, a prompting phrase. Um, it is absolutely acceptable for me. I'm not bothered by that. Um, perhaps professional editors would find that to be a little, a little uh, corny. But as a student, as a student phase, at your student uh, phase of development, this is a very useful and acceptable uh, phrase to put right into your writing. Why? Because it clearly identifies for your reader what your where your thesis is. It's a nice label. And more importantly, it helps you to generate the sentence or the, the idea uh, that answers. This is like a question you're asking yourself. Well, what is it I'm uh, answering and arguing in this essay? When you finish writing that essay, this sentence, you know the answer to that question. Whatever comes here is your thesis statement. So it helps you generate your thesis statement, in other, in other words. One more thing. The number one most helpful thing to do when you're trying to create a good thesis statement, a good top-down structure, is to jump right in. And that's what Weston is talking about in his Rule 34. Uh, Weston has this Rule 34 called Jump Right In. And I want to bring this to your attention because jumping right in is a key to academic writing and to really to all writing. Um, to journalistic writing, for instance, you read a newspaper article, you, you know right away what it's going to be about. You feel like the journalist jumps right in. Well, something that people don't quite get at first that I'm trying to give you a, a shortcut and um, get you to see quicker in as a college student than most college students is that we do the same thing in academic writing. And, in, and this applies also to business writing and to formal, any kind of formal writing at all. We jump right in, which is to say we don't hold anything back. We don't build up toward um, our points. We do that in the body of our text, but at the very beginning of the text, we jump right in and say what it is we're trying to say. Uh, in academic papers, we call that the thesis statement, um, but the same rule applies to all these different things. What is it your, what's your main point? What are you trying to say? Just say that. Um, and so that's what Weston is getting at here. And, uh, and this is, um, is going to be a key concept to it when you write your academic papers. Lastly, I'll point out that Essay 2 requires you to clarify a key term in your thesis statement using the strategies from the Definition and Distinction Week. So make sure that you have written that section of your essay uh, when you draft this week as well. The way to do this is to pick out the most important but also maybe the most unclear or ambiguous term in your interpretation and spend several sentences or a paragraph developing exactly what you mean by that term. And in my example here, I simply use the same um, strategy as the definitions homework. I clarify clear cases, uh, clearly things that are clearly in, things that are not, clearly not in the definition of that, that term is describing, and then the borderline case. And this can actually become one of the uh, meaty 
substantive parts of your argument. It can get very interesting if you dive into the subtleties of what you mean by a term and why that's critical to understanding your interpretation. The other very short reading I gave you this week is a few pages from Kate Turabian's Student's Guide to Writing College Papers. A few points, tips that she has about drafting your paper. She'll explain how to draft in a way that feels comfortable. Some of us are slow drafters and others are fast drafters, and we have to treat those different styles differently. She'll discuss how you can picture your readers asking friendly questions and how to develop productive drafting habits, such as drafting in an undistracted environment, which I highly recommend. Let me just end with a quote from Turabian to send you off this week on your drafting uh, task. Turabian writes, Many inexperienced writers think that once they have an outline or storyboard, they can just write it up, grinding out sentences for a draft. Experienced writers know better. They know that thoughtful drafting is an act of discovery that an outline or storyboard may prepare them for but can never replace. In fact, most writers don't know what they can think until they see it appear on the page before them. You'll experience one of the most exciting moments in research when you discover yourself writing out ideas that you did not know you had. So don't look at drafting as just translating your storyboard into words. Think of it as an opportunity to discover what your storyboard has missed. Happy writing this week. I will see you guys next week.